guys and welcome to my first live stream of get to know me get to know shamani i would love to start off by telling you that in fact i have some serious news to share with you i have decided that i'm going to move back to south africa i know i just you know i just cannot live in this country anymore australia is just too darn beautiful and it's just too amazing to live here <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. This is my lame attempt at uh, an April Fool's joke since today is the 1st of April. And I thought it would be really appropriate to share something like this because it's so the opposite to what I stand for and what I really believe in and enjoy and appreciate. Probably one of the biggest things for me in life is the fact that I now live in this amazing place in Australia. And I say now I've been living here for about 16 years and just cannot get enough of Australia. So who am I? A little bit more about me. I am a mum of four beautiful little children, three boys and a girl, and they are all under the age of eight. Yes, I know. I know. Crazy at times. Sometimes I wonder whether we were clever or stupid to decide to have four children. <laughs> But um, it's just been absolutely fabulous. These kids have brought such joy to our lives. They, they give another dimension to, to living, really. Yes, it's hard work. Yes, you know, it, it, it's basically never ending. No, we still don't sleep through in the night because we have so many of our children still waking up through the night. But that's fine. That's absolutely fine because I would do it in a heartbeat again. Absolutely love our little kids. As I said, I live in Perth. I used to obviously live in South Africa and I married a beautiful Burshian, if you know what that means. It just means I married my very good friend. We were friends for about seven or eight years before we got married. And uh, he now lives obviously in Australia with me and his name is Carl. And he is just the most amazing husband, supportive, and I love him to bits. He is absolutely my better half. <laughs> A bit about my background in terms of what I have studied and worked in, because I know people ask me often about what it is that I've actually done. Now, I'm one of those people who have done a gazillion things, literally. I, in, in the sense of different industries that I've worked in, I have worked in politics. I have worked in software design. I have worked in universities, teaching. I have worked in hospitality. I have actually even worked for ourselves scrubbing other people's decks yes i know for an extra income on the side carl and i did that at a point in time as well so i have literally done everything that you can think of in terms of industry-wide things i have also studied a wide variety of things and proud to say that everything that i have started with my studies i've actually completed um, but I started off with a Bachelor of Commerce, actually specializing in tourism management. Then I did uh, fashion design, a diploma in fashion design. Who would have thought? Really enjoyed that because I've got quite a bit of a creative streak to me. After I did that, I did a postgraduate diploma in tertiary education, so teaching adults. And then th that was all done in South Africa. And then I came over to Australia and did a couple of master's degree here, master's degrees here in um, tertiary education again. So how to teach adults and more about the ins and outs with teaching older people, I say older people, you know, not children. <laughs> There's quite a big difference in how you approach teaching people who choose to learn something versus people who are actually put in a position where they have to study something. And I did those couple of master's degrees here at Curtin University. And then I also did um, a few bits and pieces in between while I was doing my um, work. After, actually, after my master's degree, I went off and worked and then went back to university to, to do my PhD. And I did that on a scholarship here in business information systems, which is really fabulous. Um, I love that. And while I was doing my business information systems PhD on the scholarship, I also got a scholarship to do a commercialization diploma, which 
teaches you how to commercialize your research, which was absolutely fabulous as well to learn about all of those things. Subsequently, I have started um, doing my diploma in local government because obviously I, if, if you don't know yet, I am also a councillor at one of the municipalities in Perth or a city council as we call it here and uh, doing my local government diploma while being a councillor and I have also done something else. What's that? Oh yes, I also have a, a license in real estate. So I decided to get that under my belt too because I really enjoy real estate and the property market. Okay, so that's what I've studied um, and worked in. Once I've started having a family, what's that now, eight years ago, um, I used to travel to Canberra very often, like in and out of Canberra every, I think it's about 16 or so weeks a year that you have to be there. And I just realized that that's not really going to be family friendly for me and um, having my children, obviously. And my husband certainly didn't want to be a single dad <laughs> for all the years. So I decided to to embark on being my own boss and, and look into having a career where I'm independent of other people, shall I say, uh, in the sense that I wanted to work for myself. I wanted to create something that I was passionate about, that I could grow and uh, just basically, yeah, do, do business on my terms. And that's why I actually started one of my businesses online. And um, as you know, there's a lot of things that play a part of how you choose to decide what kind of business that you would like to do. But um, yeah, one of the things are the fact that I have a time and location independence, which is absolutely fabulous because if you're a mum like me, I can now choose when I see my children, how often I see them. If I wanna to go to the school feet, if I wanna go and sleep with my child in the afternoon, if they're not feeling well or any of those things, I can now be a mum and work as well at the same time, which is a very deliberate decision on my behalf. Now, what are, what, what are some of the things that I'm passionate about? I am absolutely passionate about helping other people. Go figure. Uh, I guess it, it just goes without saying because if you look at the history of what I've done and things that I've worked in, it's 99.9% .9 of the time being in, 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 in industries where I actually could help people directly, usually in the service industries or in policy or in representation of other people. But if I can make a difference to somebody else's life, that just gives me immense satisfaction. I also have a massive passion in helping animals and caring for animals. I'm one of those people that literally, if I see a grasshopper whose one leg is missing and it's struggling to jump straight, it would send me off crying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a very, very soft heart for animals, insects, the work. So, um, yes, the only, the only three insects I would consider killing are mosquitoes because they will carry me away alive. Flies and sometimes ants if they are going to bite me because I don't really appreciate that. But that's pretty much it. I don't like killing, killing spiders. I don't like killing any other creature that crawls. I would rather catch them or carry them out. And um, yeah, so no, no scaredness of insects and snakes or nothing like that. I grew up being outside most of my life and I really do enjoy being out in nature and being with animals and watching little insects do their thing. Another passion of mine is travel. I have traveled extensively and I would still love to travel once this pandemic is over. Would really love to travel a bit more with my family around the world. We cannot wait to go on an extended around the world trip. But you may or may not know that we have recently done a trip as a family around Australia. We took four months off, well, Carl took, my husband took four months off his job because he had long service leave. And I was working on the road as we went because remember I said, luckily I now have a location and time independent job, which is great. 
So um, yeah, so I was still working on the road and we vlogged the whole trip. So if you haven't seen that yet, hop into 100 sunsets in 100 days around Australia on our YouTube channel. That's where you can follow along and have a good laugh sometimes because, you know, it's absolutely our family almost, I want to say unedited, but it's not unedited. We had to edit it to just fit it into bite-sized videos for you. But it's um, in a motorhome, six of us, an incredible experience. Okay, another thing that I am passionate about is uh, looking after my health. Now, different dimensions, of course, to that equation. One of them to be a healthy diet. Um, the other is to exercise regularly and also to have a healthy mindset. Now, I work really hard at making sure that those three things are in order for me and for my family. And I know that if those things are, well, they are my priority, but if those things are in place, then everything else really falls into place um, easily. Then life is manageable. You don't have aches and pains, or you can try and get rid of most of those kinds of things that are so often brought on by diet and um, lack of exercising, really, and lack of caring for your your mind and your heart, you know, just your general well-being. So that's something that I really do focus on. Then uh, some other interesting bits and pieces about me, I guess, is I am actually, believe it or not, quite a sporty person. I can play most sports. I think there was not a sport at school that I did not participate in. Netball, hockey, short distance running, long distance running, medium distance running. What else do you have? Um, so in the culture field, I sang in the choir, I can play the guitar. I did a bit of violin lessons at a point in time, some piano lessons when I was really young as well. I did lots of speaking. That's one thing I did. Um, speaking, like what you call it, Riedenarsch. What's that in English again? Debating at school. So I participated in a lot of debating competitions. And I'm just one of those kind of people who just love to try out everything. I, I have this kind of motto in life where I'd rather try things and find things that I don't like rather than not trying and then not knowing. So yes, I, I, I often go by process of elimination. <laughs> then uh, a couple of other things that I think you might find interesting is that I love gardening. I'm a DIY kind of person. I'm a very creative kind of spirit. I love beautifying my house. I, I really do enjoy living in a nice environment and if my environment is cluttered and things are not in its place then I struggle to have a clear mind. So most probably most days I start off by just making sure everything is in its spot and it's all packed away and <laughs> cleared up so that I can have a clear space in my mind to think and do what it is that I have to do to drive my day and my business and our family forward. Another thing that I do, which I don't think many people my age at least do, is that I knit and I crochet. Well, I can knit and crochet, I just don't get the time to do it as often as I would like to. But um, those are a couple of things that I really do enjoy a lot. I pretty much self-taught knitting when I was uh, my, my grandmother used to knit a lot and my mother can knit as well. She was a great knit, knitter as well. But I do remember my grandmother knitting a lot of things for me. And then, uh, you know, this is like a year or two, long, long, long time ago. And then I didn't really do much about it until I was probably about 20 years old. I thought, hmm, I'll, I'd like to start knitting again or teaching myself. So I just bought some books and pair of needles and off I went and I 20 years ago actually knitted probably about 20 or 25 items for my one day children which I then kept very safely tucked away neatly and when my children were born finally 20 years later I was able to take those out and wear it like for them put it on for them and I do really enjoy seeing them in it and it just gives me the warm and the fuzziness when I see them. So knitting and crocheting, love doing those. And what else can I tell you? I, oh, okay. 
I guess two of my strongest points, if I have to single that out, I'd say, is that I have a very strong perseverance. I can pretty much keep going if times are tough and I, if I set my mind on something or I have a goal in mind, I'll keep going at it until I make it. It's just you know, one of those things I, I, I have a... I like to complete things. The com what do you call it? A completion syndrome almost. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so once I do decide I want to do something or there's something important that needs to be done, I will just keep going at it and keep going and keep going. I think a lot of this was really taught or learned when I was at school with my long distance running. And, and really, I think any kind of sport that you, or sport or or skill set that you'll that you learn at that age because you got to keep practicing and going back at it and keep trying for you to really be successful and to be able to learn that skill set so that and a combination of doing long distance running because oh, <laughs> yeah sometimes it just feels like it never ends so you just keep going and going and going um and then a, a time when i really found that useful in having that skill set really two three times i'd say the first one was when i moved to australia i needed perseverance skills the whole process of applying and then coming and then just you know finding your feet and making australia my home that did require quite a bit of perseverance because it's easy to just go oh i'm struggling too much look at all my friends in south africa having a good time i'm just going to go back so no i Persevere through that and thank goodness I did because I absolutely love this place. I now call home. The second one was when I did my PhD. It's three, I think it was three years that it was a, a lot of input that I had to stuck at it, stick at it. So I stuck at it and luckily managed to, um, to do that in the time frame that was provided. So I basically completed my PhD in a three year time frame. And then the last one was perseverance with um, having a little family because our children, as you may or may not know, are all IVF miracle babies. And it's not an easy thing to go through. So I just persevered through every miscarriage, through every struggle, through every unsuccessful IVF transfer that we had, um, but I'm so super thankful that we were able to conceive our four children in the end. And um, man, they are just the most amazing little blessings in our lives. So that's it. I oh okay, and the oh, the last thing is so perse perseverance is the one thing, and I think another great skill set of mine is probably being able to see the bigger picture in things. So I am usually a kind of person that can stand back and look at, but why are we here? What's happening? And I, you know, I can step out of the, the bogging, the being bogged in the detail um, and keep reminding us of where we're heading, what it is that we're doing. Um, and that's, that's really important, especially if you're building a business and it, you can just get so involved in this one little tiny detail that you forget sometimes what it is that you're actually trying to achieve so that's it i love being strategic i love helping our city develop into being a better place as a local government counselor and just making life better in general for people so again as i said you know my passion is to help people and to help animals and i'm really thankful that i get to do that in one of my I want to say day jobs it's not a job being a counselor it's a part-time more volunteering role um, even though you're elected to the position but it's um yeah it's i'm just really blessed in my life and how everything that i do fits together supporting the passions that i have and um, allowing me to be a contributing member to society and have my little family and just grab life every day and making the best of it I hope this has given you something interesting to listen to about my life. And if you have any more questions, I'm always an open book. More than happy to share any of my knowledge down below if you wanted to hop it into, pop, put it into the comments. 
and when I come back in some of the next days, I'll try to answer any of the questions that you've added. Thanks guys and girls for watching and I'll see you tomorrow again. Bye.